You welcome back to News File. This is your most authoritative news analysis show. My guest, Dr. Steve Manteyao Kwekubako, um, Madam Mona Kote, former finance, deputy finance minister, and Nana Akomia, communications director of the new patriotic party, the governing party, and soon to be named some, not a minister, some very powerful portfolio. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, now, the, show is brought, <laughs> <laughs> the show is brought to you. Special prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> the show is brought to you by Bank of Africa, strong as a group, close as a partner, MTN. Welcome to the new world. Acap Compost Fertilizer, truly natural. Mm -hmm. And I just told you that not too long ago, here on the show this morning, I've had some very fantastic um, feedback about Acap Compost Fertilizer and how they do their work. You may need that. White Temple Agency, a luxury. You can afford. Now, we come to this issue of the uh, interoperability matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, on, on, on February 3, 2017, the BNFT, the BNFT, the financial uh, newspaper, Times newspaper, Business and Financial Times new paper reported about a contract supposedly given to a group to do a job that the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement System gives could do, and also that there were three shortlisted companies that were supposed to do uh, bid for this job. Apparently, the company that had the business was only recently registered or incorporated in at uh, the Registrar Generals. Uh, we have seen documentations of their incorporation, the directors, and there are some things that we may share with you later about that. And that they won the contract when others far experienced who also had given, you know, cheaper prices, were rather uh, not taking. Issues have also been raised about the speedy manner in which the contract was given to this particular group, in a way that appears to offend the laws of Ghana as far as the Procurement Act is concerned. So, what exactly is going on? Let me go on the phone lines uh, quickly. We will speak to Mr. Kwame Opong. He's a digital finance services consultant. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you very much for having me, Samson. Great. Now, um, you are reported to have uh, said, for example, that it is confusing as to whether or not the amount <coughs> that is being quoted 4.6 billion is going to be a payment by the Bank of Ghana. And you say typically the HAP is not paid by the facilitator, but generally they make some kind of switch feed on the platform they facilitate. What does that mean? Okay. Um, so let me put this into a bit more clarity. I think generally how this works is that the participants within any interoperability scheme agree on the operational, the legal framework, and then the commercials, which include the pricing, the cost, and customer support, and whatnot. Then the governing body that is established essentially also makes a decision whether to either build a platform for themselves, and we've seen instances in some countries where the government, for instance, will build it by themselves, take the whole cost, or to contract a third party to undertake this service, and then there are some fees that they earn based on the transactions that they facilitate. Mm. So that is the variant in models that is out there today. In terms of the switch, what the direction Bank of Ghana is going, I think it is clear that that is the option that they would have preferred, and understandably so, because of the investment cost and whatnot, because it's very expensive. I mean, the, the operational cost in terms of licensing, 
the platform costs and whatnot are quite substantial. So it's, it's not a bad decision to go in one direction or the other. Right. It depends on your market. Okay. Now, this particular facility essentially is to assist citizens to be able to do banking transactions using their phones and even perhaps be able to do any other transactions using their phones. Is that correct? Yes. So it's not just their phones. So there are different kinds of interoperability. But I think Bank of Ghana was going for a broader level of interoperability. Right. So you could have wallets to wallets, which is really you being able to send from one mobile money provider to the other. Mm -hmm. You could have between bank accounts and mobile money wallets. And then you could also have a variance where, um, you know, the POSs at retail points and whatnot can also accept payments from either your phone or whatnot, right? So it's really harmonizing all the different platforms to be able to receive all forms of payments. Okay. The, the telecoms companies are not excited about this. They have actually written. And among their complaints, they are suggesting that this is just <coughs> money we are seeking to waste. Perhaps not just waste, but this is some way to, as it were, I don't want to use the word at the risk of a defamation suit, but they seem to suggest that there are already existing platforms for interoperability in the mobile money <coughs> space. So why this? Do you agree with them? Well, they, they, have, they certainly have a point there um, in terms of the fact that today, if you look at uh, GIFs, they provide some level of connectivity. If you look at um, Express Pay, Slide Pay, and Sano, Cornet, all these institutions have actually built interconnecting um, infrastructure to facilitate payments. However, they are currently looking at some elements of interoperability and not the broader interoperability. So, in terms of what the provider, you know, the, the party that Bank of Ghana has contracted to support with interoperability. I think there are issues in there in terms of what the full scope of that project is supposed to be and, and whatnot. But in terms of basic, you know, sending money from MTN to Tigo and whatnot, but actually going into your wallet, I think that is what the industry is referring to, which is it already exists to some extent. But with that being said, we also have to recognize the fact that Bank of Ghana being the regulatory authority, this is squarely within its ambit, and they would want to see this done a bit more effectively, especially to be able to lower the cost. Today, technically, you could send money from network A to network B. It will, it will be received as a voucher and is much more expensive. Mm. But if you're able to harmonize it, you're able to drop costs a lot lower to make it easier for you know, people in the bottom of the pyramid to also be able to become financially included and have access to this. We've seen instances in, most in some countries where they have a very good setup, but low value payments cannot be afforded on those platforms. And so people continue to be financially excluded, whereas those who already have access continue to enjoy more services. Mm. Do you share in the concerns that this uh, entity, Sipton, is just, is just too young in the industry and that it ought not have been considered, and particularly that it was um, looking for this together with two other more competent who had uh, given lower, as it were, uh, quoted lower prices, and they rather were not considered. Now, the vice president, Dr. Baumia, has been petitioned by uh, Bernard Avle to look into this. Uh, do you agree with those uh, arguments that they ought not have been giving this contract? Right. So that argument can only be soundly addressed if there's some clarity on what the actual contract was. Mm. Because today, as an industry, we still have insight, frankly, we're getting most of our information from media reports, which is quite interesting, mm. right? And so it's difficult to, for instance, say, one, what the content, now, they are, they are new companies with regards to this whole operation. Mm. I think Sipton and the two other parties. Those who are currently providing these, you know, different forms of the service in, in smaller fashion, have some experience going back, you know, two, three to five years, right? Mm -hmm. But then you also have a scenario where um, we do not know, for instance, what the cost assumptions were. 
if you hear something like a 14 million and then a 4.6 billion, obviously something is off. <laughs> now, what is it, right? Is one person looking at an operational cost over a period, whereas the other person is looking at a setup cost? Because as an industry, there's, you know, there are ideas about how much these things should cost mm. as a setup. Mm. But in terms of its long-term operation, there are potentially costs that are dependent on what the central bank wants to do. If, for instance, the central bank wants to just allow you to be able to send money from Airtel to Vodafone Cash, Airtel money to Vodafone Cash, there's that scope and it comes with its cost. If you want to be able to harmonize all financial transactions and essentially, as has been put, a retail payment infrastructure, now you're talking about licensing fees for, you know, fraud management um, applications and whatnot that potentially even surpasses some of the costs that have been shared and, you know, the licensing costs over a five to ten year period. So without really any information, you know, any official information being put out there from the central bank in terms of the cost mm. and the scope, it's very difficult to assess the cost. Okay. It seems like there is a miscomparison there. I see. Uh, my very final question to you will be that obviously it does look like we, we are late in catching up with what's What's, what is expected to happen uh, in making sure that we have such a facility. Um, I've been reading about is it Kenya, uh, Nigeria, and more importantly, South Africa. And obviously, that suggests to me that we are, we are late in, in catching up with, with this uh, system, making sure we have a cashless society, for example, and all of that, and the benefits that come with it. What will be your advice moving forward as far as this is concerned? Okay. So this is very important. And for those who observed, I think this industry had been quite somewhat ignored in, you know, by the public for a very long time because it wasn't being successful, mm. to be honest. From the 2009 coming in, it was just a loss. But very recently, the central bank, through its convening authority, has essentially facilitated a process which involved the different players collaborating, and that began to achieve some major successes, mm. including putting out the electronic money issuer guidelines, which we believe, to a large extent, was very, very robust and was actually a model that was being replicated in other countries. That's one. Now, some of these countries that you mentioned, South Africa, for instance, is a more advanced economy. So the achieving these forms of digital payment in a way that continues to exclude the low value transactions which typically are needed to be able to lift the poor out of financial exclusion mm. so that's why you see an MPSA get out of that market you look at nigeria for instance the regulatory framework does not really enable this so mobile money is still far behind in nigeria mm. whereas they've been more successful with their card and in kenya i mean kenya was the original market mm. and so they've been more successful but i think from a ghana market perspective and from a central banking and industry perspective as well the central bank needs to continue to facilitate, not really, you know, sort of dictate and whatnot. The central bank needs to facilitate, and I think to a large extent that's what they've tried to do. Mm. Then the, the, the industry needs to collaborate, which as well continues to be the case. This is a very challenging situation that seems to have come out of nowhere in the sense that I don't think the industry was fully involved, and that may have been reflected in the letters they may have written, because like I mentioned, there should have been some form of council that decides even <clears throat> what the technical and commercial requirements are. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to determine who is the right kind of player to be able to support it. There is nobody offering that level of interoperability in the country. Mm -hmm. And frankly, it will shock you to know that in the market that has had the most successful interoperability, there was no switch. Mm. Tanzania is just a, set, it's just a bank mm -hmm. sitting between two mobile money vendor players doing settlements and they are seeing amazing volumes. Whereas markets that have set up a switch, uh, Pakistan and whatnot, are yet to see any successes close to that. So it's really a matter of collaboration and facilitation. And I think this issue, um, hopefully I'm speaking for everyone who's in the industry, that the earlier some resolution can be brought to it and clarity is brought to what's happening, mm. the better it will be for, every, you know, for, for players because of the investment issues, for consumers, for their confidence and for the central bank for the reputational concerns that may be you know, emanating from this, this ongoing issue. But it's, it's quite unfortunate. Kwame Opong, we are very grateful to you for making time and to speak to us. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And he's sharing quite uh, some very good expertise there. Now, uh, come back to the studio and uh, start with Madame Monacote. Obviously, 
um, from my you know, reading about these things, obviously, that in Africa, we are still doing over 90% of as it were, cash physical mm -hmm. transactions, that's very terrible. It mm -hmm. suggests how not ready we are for what must come. So something like this ought to be embraced. But question one, people say if you allow it in the monopolistic manner that has been done, you're going to have price efficiency and lack of innovation. That's what price you're compromising. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so thank you so much. So first of all, I just want to put this in context a little bit. This is uh, the business of moving money between telcos, right. between, um, let's say, Tigo, mm -hmm. MTN, instead of um, Airtel to Airtel, now you can move Airtel to MTN and Correct. so forth. Mm -hmm. So it allows interoperability, which mm -hmm. is a big word, but that's right. basically across networks. Um, this is a business that... Last year alone, between January to September, nine months, mm. there was more than 368 million individual mobile money transactions. That's a huge number of transactions. This amounted to about 51.4 billion CDs. Mm. This tells you already that this is big business. We are talking about a lot of cash and a lot of transactions. It's mm. big business in just nine months. Mm, there's, there's some other uh, figures that suggest that we actually had 78.9 billion. So we are, we are just yeah, talking just about a very year. large amount yeah. of mm. money. Very, out very of, large amount of, of money. Out of over 555 million transactions. Correct. Mm. Now, in Ghana, we've always talked about financial inclusion and, and working towards that. The Ministry of Finance even has a week for financial literacy, financial inclusion. Um, Fidelity Bank has a whole sector on that. African Development Bank has been giving us money to try and promote that, to bring more people into the bankable, more mm. people into the formal financial service world. Mm. So this forms all, all part of that. Now, when we look at this size of business and this size of transactions, we need to be careful that the regulator which is the central bank, mm. has an eye on it. Mm -hmm. In fact, starting from two years ago, people had been wondering that is the central bank monitoring this just as um, people had been unhappy about what happened with the micro uh, um, finance group, mm -hmm. that are people monitoring this when people send money and it never gets to the other end? Who do you go to to complain and so forth and so on? So the telcos yeah. have been doing this business. It's a lucrative business for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. I mean, look, mm -hmm. that's what they are in, in town for or in business for. So Central Bank decided that let us now start to monitor this. And it is fair and it is right. It, it protects the poor and the vulnerable. Who are the ones who usually send money through this? We are now seeing larger amounts being sent. GIPS, which is an entity that is owned by Central Bank, was set up in May 2007. GIPS has had a certain mandate and still has that mandate. It was to implement and manage interoperable payment system infrastructure for banks and non-bank financial institutions in Ghana. They have a platform that can also do the same work for telcos. Yes, they do. But their mandate was not to do mobile money um, business or, or monitor mobile money business. Mm -hmm. It was to monitor for banks and non-bank financial institutions. <coughs> One can argue that, why don't you let them adjust and do this? The regulator felt that, listen, this whole thing is still new in the world, mobile money movements. I want to have a dedicated um, way of, of, of checking. Mm -hmm. So a regulatory framework from another partner altogether that does this for me. After I own GIPS, if mm -hmm. I wanted to use them, I would use them, but I'd have a new one to do it. Mm. I don't I look want at it to just like the Interconnect Clearinghouse. Correct. And how we did it. And the mm. Interconnect Clearinghouse works mm. on GIPS. Okay. So even though GIPS can do this, Central Bank decides that, listen, I want to do this separately and monitor it for a while. Mm. Now, to do this, I don't want to spend money. So Mr. Pon spoke about the different business models. Mm. And the central bank chose the model where the um, company that will do this regulatory work will fund it, charge a small user fee to recoup the money. Mm. This is a long-term investment. It's not short-term. It's not okay. medium-term. So, so it's like actually long-term. Like you said, 
among other things. Let me now just so come the back central here. bank is yes. the regulator and has chosen to Fine. do it this way. Fine, and you're we talking can debate about they how having to done. charge a certain rate There'll and be a then user fee. recoup yes. uh, a user fee and recoup. But the question is, how did you come to settle on a company that was okay? So let's talk about who is four, doing it. Four point six billion instead of one that is giving you fourteen million and one that is giving you five million. So Samson, I was only trying seeking to establish the need for mm. this and Ganesh why the regulator will do this. So yes. it's, it's within mm. regulatory yeah. framework mm. approach. Then in making the choices, we do have uh, public procurement mm. authority in this country. Okay. Governments institutions must go through the process at the PPA. So the central bank apparently put out a, a tender and some companies came forward. Right. The companies that came forward came based on a certain terms of reference that Central Bank had. The three of them may have met it or may not meet it. From what we are reading mm. and hearing, the three that we, we are speaking all about qualified. all met yeah, the yeah. criteria right. at different costs. Now, I don't even know for a fact that um, the Sipton Switch company quoted $4.7 billion. That I think there's a bit of a question mark. I'm going to have to check that. And perhaps Central Bank themselves should come out mm -hmm. and say exactly what the quotation was. Okay. I, I'm hearing that it was not that amount. It was not the 4.6 It was not 4.7. Yeah, it was not 4.6. So okay. let us find out whether that is the... Because that seems so far from the other two. It's like an outlier. Right. These are millions and then this is, is Especially in the context that all qualify. Yes. So I think that that should be checked. And mm. Central Bank should come out mm. and give us some clarity on mm. that. When you spoke about the, the age of the company, that mm. it was only set up recently, mm. a company can be new, but the people who work in the company, what is their qualification, what is their CV, mm. what is their resume, how long have they been doing this? It is that team mm. that is the important. Okay. So I think that if but we had the information... important is that, and it's where, track where people record. are raising questions, apart from track record, equally important that these individuals since they're going to handle money belonging to the state somewhat, we ought to be assured. Let, let us be careful here. They, they are, are not handling money. They are handling the flow, mm -hmm. but they are not actually handling the money. The okay. money is not theirs to manage and manipulate. Mm. They are only watching the flows they are, to they are ensure. They are being pointed at some of them who have dealt with entities that have had questionable questionable okay. operations in Ghana. So I, said, I won't speak to that because right. I don't know okay. that. But let me just speak to the fact that I'm sure they are we'll get to, we'll we'll get get to there it. in due They are course. managing so, flows. So maybe, maybe just answer this. Uh, people want to know what process led to they winning? Was there public consultation? People want to know about that. The regulator because doesn't always have to go for public consultation. They okay. can consult if they wish to. But the regulator knows what they are looking for, mm. which is how is money moving from place to place. And when there is a problem, mm. it's not the public that will solve it. It is the regulator who will solve it. So okay. they want to put in place a system to monitor these flows. It's not that this money goes to anyone. Okay. So that process of picking who will do that, if they didn't follow the public procurement process, mm. then yes, we must take them to task. So mm. I think what is important is for Central Bank to publicize how they went through the public procurement okay. process to come <laughs> arrive at choosing this company. Okay. I don't think we should jump the gun by assuming that because they were newly formed, they are not experienced, they are not qualified. Mm. Most likely, they are. And then exactly what they are coming to do, we know it is what the regulator wants them to do. Mm. And the regulator is not spending a penny. Mm. So no one should think that the regulator is putting out 4.6 billion. That's not true. Okay. I do think the regulator should come out mm. and let everyone know since nowadays the public and everybody is so interested in how public financial management is being done. Mm. I think that um, <coughs> in the past all this was not shown, but maybe now the central bank should come out and explain some of these things. Okay. However, you, you, you we should said, be careful that... You said that you're not going to answer the question about the reputation of the individuals Because I don't know. In the because you don't because know? Because I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but you would have known 
Didn't you have something to do I with the central bank? I wasn't part of this bank? procure. No, I, no, I okay. worked for the as, Ministry as of Finance. Minister. Yes, as a Minister yes. of Finance. Yeah, but we don't in get involve ourselves in the day-to-day -day mm. management of the monetary the policy staff. Okay. They have their own management. Yeah. They have a complete governor. And right. they have their, their deputy right. governors who handle this. Okay. Thing. Well, that's, that's interesting because it's, it's a bigger issue that should come also, up. Also, public money is not mm. being spent. We okay. are not putting out money. It is the company that they have... Um, gotten to through the tender process, who is going to spend this money? Okay. The central bank is not putting out money. Well, Ghanaians have heard this over the time that, oh, we are not, the state is not paying any money into anything, but in the end... Um, it's a PPP, it's a public-private partnership, and mm. therefore if mm. this system doesn't work in getting the regulator what they want, right. which is checking on it, mm. the person installing or putting the system and doing the job will not get any money. Okay. Right. Now, um, maybe I should have uh, Akumia speak briefly, then I'll come to you, uh, Doc. Yes. Nana, what do, you, what do you say about the questions that are being raised? Of course, after the BNFT did the publication, of course, nobody has seen the contract yet. Okay. Uh, then you had other media platforms um, doing stories about this, and then you know, putting forward the tender documents out there, you know, or what, what must have been some uh, situation out there. And then also the, the telcos and the content of their letter that they, they sent to the, to the BOG, quite, quite significant, that they have been in this business, they have set up subsidiaries that are already doing this job. So like the interconnect thing that we had all the arguments about, why do we need this? And why yeah. did we settle on this entity that is going to cost us so much? Well, thank you, Samson. Um, I think the onus is on the Bank of Ghana mm. to come out and make full disclosure. Because there are aspects of this uh, contract mm. that are of great interest to the public. Mm. The ordinary Ghanaian on the street who want to know how this will affect the cost. Because mobile money transfer, for example, is going to be huge on the, in, on the horizon as far as money is transferred. Mm. Every time you go to where the, the stores are, there's, there's always business going on. Okay. And they charge you, you transfer 2,000, they charge you about 20 cities, mm. and then the person collecting the 2,000. Okay, about 20. so, so uh, let's, let's uh, be, be summarizing what we are okay. saying. But at, at least get to um, the details as much as okay. you can, but be, be quick with them because yeah, you don't have um, time. I have just about 10 minutes okay. to add to the 12 o'clock. So for the us to go. BOG has a duty to come clean, do a proper briefing, press briefing, where all the issues will be tabled, and then if they have convincing <coughs> answers. Um, some of the issues have been covered already. The gap between the at that bit mm -hmm. and the winning bit. So huge. Um, it has to be explained. Uh, the fact that we are not spending any money. It's just we are selling uh, a, a, a service, and the highest bidder is what you take. So we are not actually spending any money. It has to be explained. How would that affect the cost to the consumer? It has to be explained. So it's up to the BOG now. And I'm hoping that they, will be comp they should be compared to come out mm. and provide full disclosure let us know the contracting process because you already have a situation where major stakeholders the telcos even your own gifts are raising issues and it means that it raises issues of transparency and accountability in, that, in the contracting process it may be like mona is saying is something that is really going to benefit the entire financial transaction system but the questions are arising and they have to be explained right and i'm sure when they come and explain uh, people's, uh, people's hearts or minds will be set at ease, and then we'll see how it goes. Mm. And, and, and you say, and you repeat that uh, aspect about the fact that we are not paying, mm. as it were, we are not putting in money for this, but you see, not we are long not ago... making the initial investment. Initial investment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not long ago, you remember that in opposition you had problems, for example, because of the reputation of Mr. Woyome, for example, because mm -hmm. he had been given another contract, which he said that government was not paying anything, yet in the end, in that contract, 
he was going to be the biggest job creator for the country. You had every problem with that. So the questions that are being raised about the reputation of those individuals involved and why they ought to be giving such you know, a project. Actually, I, I do not have any information about the individuals involved. Mm. I, I don't. Not uh, at all? No. no, no, no. You, are, you are in government. Since I you remember, heard about this, have you no, not tried to check? I remember the Bank of Ghana official was asked mm. who, who the people behind. He, he said um, he, he couldn't make that disclosure, and I okay. found that surprising. But so far, it, it means that Bank of Ghana has not been up to task mm. in, in providing <coughs> us with the details. Or Samson knows Maybe. something that we don't know. <coughs> Maybe These are questions what, that are already yeah. out there in yeah. the publications that are oh, just wow. repeating. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my information is limited to what the Bank of Ghana yeah. official said, I think on your own network, on Joy FM. Mm. And then he seemed to believe quite strongly that this will benefit the country. But if that is going to happen, for the public acceptance, they should come and do a proper mm. press briefing where everybody will be allowed to uh, ask them questions and ask for full explanations mm. as to how it will benefit us. Because if you look at where the main, st some of the stakeholders are complaining, the telcos are complaining. Obviously, they haven't been involved yeah. mm -hmm. in, the, in the process. And they will yeah. complain. But if they were because involved, it shines the light it, on them. It, you know, if they were involved in the process, then they would also understand how accountable mm. and how beneficial mm. it would be to them and to their consumers. Even GIPS, which is part of Bank of Ghana, is also raising issues. So um, if GIPS is raising issues, then the public will raise even more issues. So <coughs> it's, it's the onus is on the bank to come and do full disclosure. And then um, if it's, um, I don't know if the, the people behind the, uh, the companies have anything to do with the matter. But until we know the people, uh, for now, is up to the Bank of Ghana, what I would say is up to the Bank of Ghana to make the full disclosure, mm. and then that will provide us with the uh, information that we need to do a proper assessment. You're right, and, and uh, as, as I noted earlier, one of those who were involved has actually petitioned about suspicions about the, the speed. Is it six weeks or so within which all of this were done, and they doubt that the processes were fully gone through as far as the requirements of law are concerned, uh, is concerned. Um, the, the question about the figure that uh, Madame Monacote is saying, yes, they may have to come clear because it does appear that's not what it is. Uh, the tender documents that we have seen so far, there's no question about the, the figure that is 4.6 billion. From where you sit, why do you think this must raise any eyebrows at all? Well, um, thank you. It should, it should raise eyebrows because we are talking about the integrity of a procurement process and of its outcome. There, there is always um, the case that when you have a very obscure, opaque procurement process, you mm. end up with you are likely to end up with poor outcomes mm. and, and, and contestable ones for that for that matter. Um, what I find generally in a very broad level is the fact that most of the procurement we do in this country are flawed. And they, they are done in a manner that lends itself to, for, uh, to rent seeking on the part of public officials. Now, I'm not saying this is what has happened, but I wouldn't be surprised if we were to lift the veil and see who are behind this company. Mm. And you find that there are some connections to corridors of power and all that. So it's, it's a much bigger problem that Ghana ought to find a way of dealing with. I believe that the way to deal with it will be to throw more light, more sunshine onto procurement processes, mm. which means the process itself is important to open to public scrutiny. So you want to do open tendering, you want to have clear qualification and selection criteria, you want to also have a, a policy to disclose the outcome of an, a tendering process mm. and the justification for the selection. So you don't leave anything to speculation. But I, 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 I was quite surprised to hear that Madame Munakwati, for instance, who's been in government, does not have access to the details. No, I don't. Exactly. And so that's the problem with the issue. And Honorable um, Akumia calling for Bank of Ghana to come and disclose. This thing should be a matter of course. Because the amount of money involved is huge. Mm. And I think until this country moves from this practice of doing opaque procurement 
to open a transparent procurement process that we are going to look. This is one of the areas we can find money to finance free SHS. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I like that. Uh, the, 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 Koku, the concern that is being raised is that, yes, we may not be paying, but, you know, the transaction charges that they would take actually is going to build into the cost. So if you had three entities that are equally qualified, how we settled on this must be an issue for national discussion. Uh, we are told one of the companies that have issues actually is going to court over all of this. Do we need to get to this? Well, 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 well. Mm. A quick one. Mm. This thing about a company recently... Uh, yeah, incorporated. Uh, yeah. I heard the same story. I remember when Cosmos came into this country. Mm. Cosmos too was newly constituted then, mm. but its expertise, the guys who constituted it had a long history uh, in the Kutira, Guinea, and all the rest. Mm. So I, I think we had the same arguments about 40s or mm -hmm. whichever they were that yes. were taking over so, Merchant so Bank and all. One has to be very careful about mm. that. There are recently formed institutions or entities that have delivered. That's right. Some have also failed. So it's not a 100% thing, okay. you know. But uh, and let me be honest, it's a confession, a very scanty, uh, information on this. I technically even, I don't have the competence mm. to actually interrogate this issue. I'm being very honest with you. It, sound, it looks like some rocket science uh, for me. But a few issues. Uh, you know, this $4.6 billion, uh, somebody was explaining to me last night, that was just when I began to check on this matter, because your topics came, you know, that it's an estimated projection of cash flow. It's 4.6 billion CDs. CDs, CDs not yes. dollars. Not dollars, Okay, no, but I'm told it is uh, an estimated projection of cash flow over after the private company has invested in that infrastructure over a period of 15 years. Yeah, it is a long term. That's project. what it is. It's a 15 year. Cost but what is the cost of, of the, the project? Projects. That's what we need to know to no, compare with others. The but those who have seen, I haven't seen the tender documents. I haven't yeah, seen the contract. Seen but those who have seen should be able to provide us with this answer. Mm -hmm. I'm only explaining what I've been told relative to the 4.6 billion, mm -hmm. that it is an estimated projection of cash flow yeah. mm -hmm. post the investment by the private company into the infrastructure over a period of 15 years. We need to understand that. I've said it, but I don't think I even financially have a powerful, a, a, a sufficient knowledge about this. Now I agree. If people have problems, let's check. How did the procurement process go? Mm -hmm. Were any laws violated or not? If they were, was the those who, are, do, those who are petitioning and going to court obviously have that view. Yes, so let them go to court mm. if that's their option. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm told uh, our friend Bernard uh, petitioned the vice president. Yes, he has. The mm. vice president may be uh, minded to say, look, let's have an inquiry of a sort to find out. I think that this is the stage. But I can get a drift from what uh, the Samson kept on asking, uh, who are involved. Mm -hmm. And then he, caused, he talked about who you may. Then I knew, <laughs> I, knew, I knew something was mm. me. So I have also heard last night, I heard a name uh, and a connection. I don't think it's fair for me to sit here no. and dis make that kind of disclosure. But I've heard, and I think I know where uh, something okay. was trying to push us to. It may soon be made public, and then perhaps we can interrogate it. But I know, I think I know the individual whose name something was whispering. Mm. You know, mm. <laughs> which one? Mm. I know. <laughs> you know I know. <laughs> but you see, well, but, because, but, but, because the because but the regulator no still needs to do its about. work. So I'm just it's asking just questions. Yes. Who is doing it that there's a question mark. Yes. 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 But in terms of the technical... It's only facilitated. Yeah. The gifts, they are a subsidiary of the they, regulator. They are owned by yeah, that's central right. bank. Yes. So really, yeah. if they were involved, then it means the regulator has to invest some money. Yes, they will have to invest. Which I'm sure the regulator was trying to pull out of. Yes. Because of the kind of stand I took on Wyoming, and relative to the second thing, I think that I have to be very careful, uh, you know, I have to be consistent. So uh, I'm not sure about the individual. We are talking here about the contract, the tender process. Did they go through the normal things? The way you make thing, when you check it, it, it didn't go through any of those processes. Mm. So I'm unable to put the two together. They are not comparable. Mm. 
until and unless I get evidence that this procurement uh, uh, process also suffered the same deficits mm -hmm. that the Wyoming one, one suffered, I'm not able to put them in the same category. Thank you, um, Kwekubako. Samson, just a quick one. Uh, one thing that we don't do in our procurement process has to do with cost benchmarking. Okay. So before you even put out the tender, mm -hmm. you need to have a fair idea how much Correct. You should, it should cost you. Exactly, yeah. they we don't do. do that. Exactly, they do have a fair idea because we have, uh, we have information credible, measurable, right. or actually factual, that in a year, this is how much you know, we got from transactions through this mobile whatever system, mm -hmm. and that the value of that was this, this amount. So they are able to project. The question people are asking now is that if you have three who are all qualified, and then one has a price that, that's inconceivable if you compare to the all others. qualified in terms of their technical know-how, track record, yeah. Yeah. Compared capacity. Compared to the others, exactly. then it means that the cost that the individual will be paying is going to be higher. To be able to get, but uh, you know, get that. whoever doesn't win will always complain in any race. Mm. But uh, what you said, not, not when the process has been open. Yeah, what you said is, I think, very important. Bank of Ghana has to come out and throw light on this, yeah, okay. and then that way, once there's credibility there, next time Bank of Ghana is doing something, nobody's going to start querying and second guessing and mm. all that. But this nation has become one where everything is now second guess because of what has happened in the past. Mm. I guess. I mean, look at us talking about Woyome today with respect to the regulator picking uh, a technical expertise. Yeah, you know. so made a second contract. We, we there was a certain yeah, second, second contract, contract. Yeah. Yeah. which mm. was of so dubious validity. Thing. So, okay. so let's, uh, well, well, let's call on Bank of Ghana. Of Ghana. I'm sure that much of the conversation around it was because of his reputation, because this yeah. was a state. I won't deny this that. This was a state that was prosecuting him mm -hmm. for wrongdoing, I for fraud and everything. You are right. And the same state turned around to give him a contract. Yeah. You have a so point? the suspicions that are being raised here is that if you have individuals who have reputational yeah. issues, yeah. why Bank do of Ghana you must come them and give contract? clarity? I, I okay. will not challenge you mm. on that, but okay. still no, we need to look at the documentation. Okay. Okay, so yeah, this show, as really always, uh, brought Most to you by ProSecure. ProSecure tea is a specially formulated health drink that improves the following problems in men. That's a urinary problems. Frequent urination during the day and night, delayed urination, straining during urination, urgency to urinate, interruption of urine flow, dribbling of urine after urination. ProSecure from Medimosis Process Center. Uh, you can look at them at Adenta Barrier, Tema Ejei Kojo, or Ahinema Kokobing in Kumasi, you could also call 020-8140668 or 024406-8447. And you could install solar power today from the world's leading brand, Victron Energy. They install both off-grid solar and hybrid solar systems for residential and commercial users. Reduce your ECG bills by up to 90%. Free yourself from the high cost of electricity and dumb so. They offer five years warranty on products except batteries that come with one year warranty. You can call them on 054 1123 430 or 020 700 26 45. You could visit their showroom at number 10 Abaka Road, Tesano, first floor. Same building with the Zuzu restaurants. Tessana, uh, <laughs> not Tessana. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, some messages here, let me read them. Um, lawyer Kwame Akufu says that the judiciary takes part in the impeachment of judges. Parliament should be able to investigate its own. Thank you. Now, Eric Mesa says that oil wealth is not the same as the heritage fund. Heritage Fund is a percentage of the oil wealth. But that one, as, that one aside, do we meet the criteria to use the Heritage Fund now? No, we would only have to amend the law because we can only touch the, that Heritage Fund after 15 years of its establishment into profitable ventures uh, that will yield interest to the future generation. Aside that, we can use that fund when our oil resources have been depleted, and that is what the law says, depleted. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel Kweku Gamsa says the issue 
I don't think far. Oh, sorry. This issue, I don't think far, Kra, uh, who in his right senses says to his wife and family, I'm saving towards the two weeks pregnant baby to have better future so nobody will eat, go to school, clothe, mm. go to hospital, including oh, the pregnant yeah. woman yeah. in this house, forgetting that the unborn child's life depends most on the mother and the siblings in the house. Okay. Uh, Catherine um, Barnes says that a boarding school free, feeding free, tuition free, and women in labor die in hospital because there are no enough beds. There are not enough beds. Some hospitals are short of gas. Yes, that's uh, Kwame uh, Konfanochi Hospital. Uh, medicines, consumables, etc. Really, let's all hope it works. Ghana must be very rich now. This is a massive project. And then Mubarak Mag Magzi says, I feel sick taking into account how our leaders think. Why do we have a reserve, uh, reserve money for the future when we need the money for the present? Why do we borrow at a very huge interest rate when we have monies that we could use um, with whatever without interest? Samson, let me say could one you... thing very quickly before you continue. Right. Because this is important. Mm. The Heritage Fund mm. forms part of Ghana's reserves. That's right. Now, as a nation, if you don't have reserves, you cannot even borrow. Mm -hmm. To be able to borrow, you must have something it's as security or collateral. Mm. The mm. Heritage Fund is 9% of the total oil revenue, which is a small part of our revenue. Mm. So please, viewers and listeners, note that we are talking about a small part of our revenue. Mm. Don't keep thinking that that little money that you're saving, you must spend it today. There is a whole lot more that you can use judiciously now. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to understand that. Mm -hmm. So don't say that we are saving in, uh, instead of borrow, uh, whatever. We are saving and then we are still borrowing and we are still not having enough. That amount that is being saved is very little mm. compared to the amount that we have available for other things. Okay. And surely we must have a reserve as a nation. Okay, last two mes messages. Eric Kojo uh, Timank Timinka says that I agree with your panelists that the president is still in campaign mode. In my opinion, <laughs> the free <laughs> SHS should be progressively free. I don't think this new administration really put in place the necessary plans to finance this free SHS. Nana should be real because I'm very much concerned about the sustainability of this project. And the one here, Akwesi Asante Abraham says, I'm sad to hear some people questioning how uh, the, finding of the, the funding of the free SHS uh, then I become sick. The three northern regions, um, how can't it be done in the other seven uh, regions? Well, uh, the way often the politicians go about debating issues, when the NDC spoke about maybe uh, Justin Sedin Ketia referred to the possibility of relying on uh, is it the Heritage Fund for something? It's not for currency uh, stabilization. Yeah, yeah, for currency it's not stabilization. The same, it's not the same as this. Um, Do both the, are, the NPP uh, mauled him. The NPP mauled yeah, him. Yeah, but he wants to currency <laughs> stabilization. Now, the same people who are against the use are the ones who are now in favor of the, uh, mm. of the use. Uh, what is right actually depends on who is in government at the time, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, UC says that Kweku Bako's <laughs> argument in relation to the... Um, Facebook. F Facebook. Facebook. Okay. It's far fetched. Okay, it's far fetched. Immediately, this bribery issue broke out. Honorable Kujeto Ablakwa, Neil Ante Vandapoy, Alasan Suhini confirmed. I haven't heard Neil Ante Vandapoy. I've heard the two. Um, is he on the approval committee? Um, he's no. on the appointments committee, yes. Is. Neil Ante Vandapoy okay. is on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, thank you for those messages and probably this very last one, then I move on. Uh, Kofi says that. The, uh, the Kiko Wantabe, Wantambe, who has been speaking Watanabe. on the issue. Watanabe, who has been speaking on this issue, uh, worked with RLG as a retail manager. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't really see the connection. Mm, okay, so that's uh, what you are trying you to... You see it. Um, you see it. Okay, thank you well, very much. Well, now we all see it. Mm. <laughs>
thank you very much and uh, thank you for joining us on the show. Uh, my outfit, as always, is supplied by Latida. My guests have been Abdul Malik Kweku Bako, editor in chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Dr. Steve Manteyao is campaign coordinator, Integrated Social Development Center, ISODEP. Then, Madam Mona Kote is former deputy finance minister. Uh, most of you sent in messages that you've really enjoyed her today, oh, right? Thank you. Nana Akomia is director of communications of the, of the New Patriotic Party, the governing New Patriotic Party. I'm still using the script that was sent me earlier. So forgive and, and it's when been I said, said It's been said that she charmed me, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She charmed you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Samson Ladi. Um, God willing, next week we'll be back here with yet another interesting edition of News File. This is your most authoritative news analysis show. Thank you. Mm -hmm.